The contour tool gives you the ability to offset the boundaries of an object in your design by either increasing or decreasing the radius amount. There are various applications for this tool, so let's take a look through some of these now. If I first select this top circle here, and you can see here I have a multiply blend mode attached to that, along with the other circles in that group too, just to give them a bit more of a dynamic look. Now I'll go over to my contour tool on the left hand side, or I can press O to use the keyboard shortcut for that too. So if we simply click and drag on or around the shape, you can see the contour of that shape is being adjusted. Along with that, the radius amount can be adjusted from the context toolbar too. If we click on this little arrow here, there's a adjustment bar we can use, or we can enter the specific amount ourselves. Next to this, we also have the option to change what fill type we have. If we click force open, this gives an almost donut like effect to these ellipses or we can force closed to obviously fill the circle. But let's keep this on auto closed for the time being. If I just put this back to zero and now select these other ellipses using shift, you can see that by clicking and dragging, I can adjust all of those simultaneously. And if I just zoom out, we can see that by adjusting to either a really high radius amount or a negative amount, you can drastically change the characteristics of the design in seconds. Another way you might use this tool is by combining it with typography. So here we have this simple line of lettering, which I created using the artistic text tool. And if I just duplicate this row by holding Command J or Control J on a PC, and then select the layer beneath from my layers panel, now I want to change the fill colour from the colour panel. And now if I grab the contour tool again and click and drag, you can see that the contour is being adjusted and just giving a nice kind of artistic text effect. If we go back to our contour options found in the context toolbar, we can change these settings to have different join types. So if we click the mitre joins, this then gives a much sharper more fitting edge to our duplicated lettering. And once we're happy with that, we can always bake in the appearance with the bake appearance button as well. In the next example, we have this simple logo made up of a few lines and an outer circle. I've also added these two top lines just to again, give more of a dynamic look to the circle. But if I select the outer circle and the cross, one way we can adjust this is by going to the settings in the stroke panel and adjusting the width. So that's one way you can do that. But if I just undo that and go to my color panel, and I just want to make sure that my stroke is set to none in this case. And if I go to my contour tool again with these two shapes selected and click and drag, you'll notice that we get quite a different effect. And it's more of a bolder way to increase the width of the elements in the logo. And it's just a very quick way to instantly make the logo look much more impactful. And again, once we're happy with the design, we can go to our bake appearance button in the top of the context toolbar and lock those appearances in. This last example I want to show you utilizes a few techniques we've looked at already, but shows some of the interesting effects you can make when you combine the contour tool with compound shapes. So as you can see here, I have some ellipses within my compound shape and they're interacting in an almost lava-like way. So one way you can do this is by going over to grab the ellipse tool and let's just make some new ellipse shapes like so. And let's also get rid of the stroke setting we have here. Now we can go to layer and click create compound. Or alternatively, we could hold option or alt and click on the add boolean option in the top toolbar too. This creates a new compound shape. Now if we grab the contour tool again and create a negative radius amount, you'll see that the shapes then interact in more of a lava-like way. So you can create quite an interesting effect in just a matter of seconds again. So it really is a great way just to potentially create some shapes and patterns which you might not necessarily have thought of making in the first place and really gives you a chance to experiment with a very different technique in this case. So there we go. That is a full rundown of the contour tool and some of the various techniques you can use with it too.